All right, so Java provides several built-in features for uh, features and classes for sorting and searching that simplify these operations significantly. These features are part of the Java Collections framework and the array class. So let's explore these built-in features. So uh, the built-in sorting features, first is the arrays.sort. So the arrays class provides several overloaded sort methods uh, to sort out so, sort arrays of different data types, including primitive data types and objects. So for example, let's say we have an integer array that has the values three, one, four, one, five, and nine. Uh, we're gonna do arrays dot sort on this int array, and we're gonna print out um, it's two string version because there's a method called to string that essentially gives a string version of it so we can see how it gets printed. Okay. And let's do the same thing with uh, strings. So we'll do a string array. So we just got banana, apple, and cherry, and it has been sorted as well. Okay. Um, so we'll use the dot sort method again from an arrays class and do so. And the two string in order to, um, we'll use the two string method in order to convert into strings so we can actually see it. Okay. So as you can see, we sorted um, the ones, the three, one, four, one, five, nine, and array, so one, one, three, four, five, nine. And we sorted the um, string array, banana, apple, cherry, to apple, banana, and cherry. Okay. Now, let's just take a look at this here. Okay. Uh, recall that um, our letters are characters the part of the string are in passing code. And so the capital letters actually come before the lowercase. So you'll want to um, use uh, do something different before you were to um, sort this. Okay, so the lowercase is this letter thing. Okay. Just wanted to show that. Right. So let's take a look though at a different one. So collections sort. So the collections class provides a sort method for sorting lists. This method is particularly useful for sorting lists of objects. So um, I'm going to make a list, which is going to actually be uh, an array list. Okay. And we'll do a string one. All right, so we got a string list. Um, let's call it list. And we're going to add to it banana, to apple, and cherry. So this should give us apple, banana, cherry um, at the end. So we're going to do collections.sort so on that list. So this is a method in the collection um, class. We find a method that's available. So then we're going to print it out. So that we find something out as well. Already has a, I mean, it's a stream method pointing to this. You don't have to do that. Do that automatically. Okay. So showing you both ways. So let's take a look at some built in searching features. Okay? So let's take a look at the binary search. This is more effective. Um, the arrays class provides a binary search method to search for a specified value in a sorted array. The array must be sorted before using this method. Get that, right? So, okay, so let's take an int array again of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, and our key that we're gonna be searching on is five. So you, it will return to you the index in which it was found. So we're going to use the binary search from the arrays class uh, on the int array at key five, meaning we're looking for the, uh, we're looking for what's the index of the number five if it's in here, okay? So let's take a look here. So we know that uh, five is here. So zero, one, two, three, four. So we should return the index of four. So let's take a look here. And that's exactly what we get, the index of five is four. Now, let's set the key equal to something that's not in here, such as zero. Notice here it returns a negative one when the index is not found because negative one is not in uh, an array or array list. Okay? So let's take a look at the binary searches in collections. So collections.binary search. 
The collections class provides a binary search method for searching in sorted lists. Okay, so like we did before, we have a string list. Um, it's going to be an array list, and it is, we're going to add apples, bananas, and cherries to it, and then we're going to do collections.sort to make sure that it is sorted. Because you can't use binary search, also here it's not sorted. Uh, so technically, you probably should have done it with the arrays as well. But anyway, um, we're going to int index because we're collecting the index. So we're telling it to do a bi collections binary search uh, on list and look for banana. So it's going to return us the index for banana. So based off this being sorted, apple, banana, cherry, 0, 1, so banana is at index 1. So we go that. We get 1, so it does work as we intended it to. Okay. Uh, let's take a look for capital banana. Okay, and we get an index of negative 1. So you want to have something that will be able to ignore this uh, if that's what you intend to. So some advantages of using built-in methods, um, the efficiency, for one, because Java's built-in methods are highly optimized and usually more efficient than custom implementations. Um, two, the convenience. Using these methods reduces the amount of code you need to write and maintain. Three, uh, reliability. Built-in members are well-tested and less prone to bugs compared to custom implementations. Okay. So in summary, Java provides powerful built-in methods for sorting and searching. Through the arrays and collections class, these methods are efficient, convenient, and reliable, making it easy to handle common operations on arrays and collections. Understanding and utilizing these methods can significantly enhance your ability to manage data in Java effectively. Bon appetit. <laughs>